Yo. Hit them back at it again. Now I got to have some gold on the farm and a chain. Baddy in the past, he a farm. Sure, told me not to give you that. I get told not to give you that till I've done fucking a good forty minute, and then you'll be pure sleeping by the next forty minute. Nah, I'll be like, brand nah, new, I'll be brand new. I'll be fine. I'll just leave him sleeping and just keep it recording all night. I'll be sound it. He's exaggerating. Saying that. Fucking old school Federals. When when is it on? Podcast? When are you recording, mate? Oh, recording already? Fuck. Oh. Yeah, mate. Right, so, mate. Just ease all that way. No, I don't need to start fucking like, oh, this is Melrose. <laughs> or just eat edibles. <laughs> Get up, I can definitely taste it. Aye. You can taste the weed. You can smell the weed off the tray. <laughs> 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 it is. It's amazing. Edibles you don't usually touch me, but this afternoon I felt myself my eyes pure heavy. Oh I ate it, Matt, and I was like, yes. Aye, that's it, it must be strong. I gave you a strong one the last time at the end of the day. Aye. Fuck it, let's see what it takes us, man. Well, that's it. Like, how big can we get? Fuck it. It's the name of the podcast, eh? If Mike Tyson can eat five gram of mushrooms in a podcast, I can eat a wee cake. Easy, mate. <laughs> I've honestly thought about that, though. Like, I'm thinking about getting a DMT pen. Mm-hmm. And just sitting here for podcast yep. guests. That's what I thought that pipe was for, for DMT. It's probably a better shout, actually. I should get some. And then it would just get trouble trippy as well. Like, that would be quite fun, actually. Mm-hmm. Get some cunts tripping on DMT while I try to do a podcast. Could be quite fun. We're just going dry for that cake, man. Okay, well, you're good. Well, you're all right. Thanks to Lil. Even if it'll be cold. They were cold when I took them out of the fridge, ever. <laughs> they were cold, but we'll see how it's gone. So, aye, first things first, let's spot some joints. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of lighter, some joints over here. Do you smoke it with tobacco? What are you thinking about it? I wasn't sure. They two there have just got a wee bit in it for you. And these ones have got a bit in it. Do you know, I went through a phase, I wasn't smoking it with tobacco for a while there. Well, if I got else, I sit with my neck and smoke it with tobacco. It makes me too sleepy, mate. See if I just smoke all greeners and I sit there like a zombie, like, I'm like just like a mad couch potato. See if there's a bit of tobacco in it. It's like a mad stimulant, man. It, it keeps me awake, so it like, counter- counteracts the fucking the sleepiness for the weed. But I still feel baked. I, I can enjoy I, my eyes still. Relax, I mean. it's fine, but your nose just born And asleep. also, I don't know, I don't know if it's because I'm used to smoking with tobacco for years, but like when I only just smoke weed itself, I feel like something's missing. I don't know why, I mean, I just feel like, I'll feel stoned and I'll just feel like, I don't know, I mean, I'll just start something. Probably, the, probably the feeling I, probably the feeling I'm used to, it's just fucking the key buzz. It's weird though, like, so many people criticise it, oh, you're smoking it with tobacco. But I don't smoke fags. The only time I smoke tobacco is where I join. And I'll still outrun you. Like, <laughs> get better cardio, so it's alright. Fuck it, bud. So it definitely does need to be eaten. That's what I mean, seeing unless you've got better cardio, you can't see it. Aye, like, I've done two half marathons this week, I'm alright. <laughs> two half marathons in a week? That's a marathon then, in a week. Aye. Did you try and do any runs this week? Nah, man, did the fuck? I let it get up. Every morning I go to get up, it's pure cold, man. And that bit of my leg's still sore. It's not sore until I wake up through the night, it's freezing cold, and then it's sore. I love not a good time for a run in there, man. <laughs> Using it as an excuse to just sit in my bed on my laptop typing balls up, man. Well, I was got to say, you're doing something productive. It's not like you're just wanting to fight, fight, fight. You're working on an album, you're working on fucking EP, you're working on tunes all the time, so... You're all busy. Like, it's because even when I'm not in training, because I'm used to being in training every day, the last week I've not been in, man. So, yeah, I've got a pure energy reserve I need to use. So, I'm just fucking getting instrumentals on and just writing say, and writing and writing. It's just finding it. yourself awake too late because you've no want all that energy. Mm-hmm. And then just sitting writing balls all night. Mm. But it's working for me. I was about to say. I've so complained about it. I'm going to ask you about What is it? How, how's it going with it? Aye, you? like, is it harder to write balls sober, or do you prefer it being baked? Like, I don't know, it's like, 
I can definitely dial into that a bit more when I'm booked because it's boring. It's like the same, same as anything, any craft that you like, after doing it for like a certain amount of time, you're going to get bored and it gets to that point where you need to be like, right, I'm going to push past this boredom now. Like, the same like hitting a bag, you're doing the same fucking combos for an hour. You're like, right, fuck, I want to go home, but you think to yourself, fuck, I'm going to push for an hour so I can be ahead of everybody else that's going home in there. So it's similar to that when I'm writing bars, I'll be like, right, fuck, I'm joking, I'm just thinking Netflix when I'm still going to go and like fucking do this, do that. And I'll just get that bored way. Like, but if I can go, if I can like, right, give myself five minutes away from it, go build a joint, take my mind off this now. Come back to it, I'll call it a joint and it'll just be like, I don't know, it'll, keep, it'll just keep me dialed in, okay, it yeah. doesn't make it so, like... Monotonous. Aye. I'm fucking stuck doing it. Right, it doesn't even make me feel like I'm stuck, it's when my mind just keeps active, like, instead of just sitting there, like, hitting a brick wall, just thinking, thinking something, she can get caught overthinking for a bar as well, man. I was going to say, do you, how many times do you revisit a bar and then edit it and change it and go, nah, this will work better? I used, I used to do it a lot more recently. I, 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 I focus a lot more on what I write in the, in the first place now, so it takes me longer to write tunes. But back in the day, I'd write a tune and I'd go there and rewrite it, and I'd, I'd rewrite everything and then change, restructure bits here and there. But now like, I'm, I'm quite happy with the first, the first, what do you call it? First brief. Is that the first edition? Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. But usually, so, sometimes I'll go there and it'll be once I'm in the studio and I'll be spitting the buzz, and it's not until like, I hear like, when I'm trying to spit it, and there'll be like certain things like. Just wee, wee small, wee, wee tiny things, wee technical things. I wouldn't have even changed it back in the day, but now because I can understand like, the flow and the, the syllable count and like, try to get my breath like or, or that sort of stuff, try to get a rest. Sometimes I'll be in a studio rapping it and I'll feel something isn't flowing the way it should be able to flow. But like, I'll still be able to get it to flow, but like, it'll, sound, it'll be kind of difficult and I think people can pick up on that when they're listening to the music as well. So, like, when people are singing along to it and if they find it hard for them to sing along a certain sing. lyric, they'll be like, I don't know, kind of throw them off a wee bit. But if it's easy for a song to sing along to it, if it's easy for them to control their breath when they're going along with it, then they'll be like, I don't know, we'll take it. Aye. Aye. Actually learn it. Aye. Aye, that makes sense though. Like, the easier a song is, the more catchy it is and the more you listen to it. Mm-hmm. Like, that fucking... Oh, for Gangnam Style, there's two words. Like, that Gucci Gang song as well, that fucking blew up. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, fucking taking a walk to Poland. Like, that's what he says, but it's simple and it's catchy. Like, See, that's what I went wrong a lot of the time. For years I've been trying to do too much, you know what I mean? Like, trying to cram, think to myself, if I can get a hundred bars crammed into this one tune, because I'm going to be able to say that I'm a heavy wordsmith, you know what I mean? That's what I think about a lot of your tunes, though, that I listen to, even the older stuff, like, that isn't on YouTube, that maybe be on SoundCloud or that. Like, there's so many fucking amazing bars, like, every second line is an amazing bar, but I'm like, why is it not blowing? Like, why is it taking so long for that to blow? Because you are a better wordsmith, do you know what I mean, than 90% of the rappers out there. It wasn't just, because I, I was, at one point I was always focusing on, but I wasn't focusing on, on my delivery, I wasn't focusing on the way I was pitching my voice, I wasn't focusing on my breath control, always focusing on, was just having bars, so it was just a case of it, and then like, I don't know, to certain people, people like, I was thinking the same way, I was thinking, look, to all people that are writing songs and that, they'll be able to get it, but oh, that was a heavy bar, but see, just your average audience, people are just listening to, to them, they're just, they're, they're not looking for the bars, it's just yeah. a sound they're hearing, so it's just, a, it's like a feeling almost, and they're just like, nah, I'm not really feeling it, because it's just, it's not, it's not got that fucking... That's what I kind of think when I think of rapping that, I'm, the delivery and the bars that they're saying, I'm wanting to see what they're talking about, like, and I don't know if that's just me, but when I listen to, like, yours, or... Even other Scottish rappers, like, their bars are amazing, so I just don't understand why it is taking so long for Scotland to blow on that sense, like, because the bars is amazing, but then you're saying about the delivery and everything else, whilst where I'm not a musician, I don't know if you're doing that right, do you know what I mean? Like, I just know it's good bars and these are fucking quality. It's just been a longer learning process, as opposed to see if I was an English artist, I'd have been able to fast track through this full process where the rap would probably been released, like fucking a hundred of the tunes that I'd released, I'd probably been able to like skip past a lot of the mistakes that I've made, but I've had to learn these mistakes, whereas when it's doing south, you've got artists that are coming up, say for example you're a 17 year old artist doing south, you want to start rapping, so you go to the studio, and say it's the same as somebody in Scotland that's just got to the studio for the first time, you're not really sure what you're doing, not somebody in Scotland got to the studio for the first time, though. It's going to be a lot harder for them, they're going to need to like, go like, tr- do that tune, try and find their flow a bit more, they'll maybe get a bit of feedback for the people in the studio, if they're lucky they'll get people that are a bit experienced in there, and they'll get a bit of decent feedback and they can work with it. Whereas down south, you're surrounded by, all, everybody, you're surrounded by all rappers, they're telling you for their experience, oh, this worked for me, this didn't work for me, this worked for me, this didn't work for me. They've got the studio and you're working with engineers and they're actually dialed into like, 
the project they want to make a good sound they're, they're, used, to, they're, they're used to working with like, people in your area or whatever they know what they're looking for and they're, they're going to be able to help you bring the best of you out a lot more whereas in Scotland people there's not really like a certain sound in Scotland as well everybody's all trying to like be different uh, it's, it's a good thing everybody's trying to be different as well obviously it's, it's, it's is it quite clicky in Scotland like like you're saying down south that people are able to help each other is there there's cause there's not as many say in Scotland there's less help because there's less people in the studio at the same time there's less people wanting to produce there's less producers do you know what I mean there is a there is a lot of people. I'd say it's the same with England. It's probably just okay. Just it's probably just the same, but there's just there's more successful people in England. Aye. But there's there's no there's not really anybody that's like had industry success in Scotland. So there's nobody you can really go to for advice. There's nobody you can really like lead the way at this point. There's nobody you can like be like, oh, well, look, that's what worked for them. That's what, I've seen them doing that wrong. So everybody's all just kind of on a big learning thing now. Everybody's all just trying to like, so where it was twenty years ago in England. With grime and that, when gigs and all I that. I probably said about ten years ago now. Aye. Aye, man. So it's, Aye. we're probably about that stage, but it's, it's starting to take off, off. But you get people, like, the way it was in England back in the day, people who in London and stuff like that would use an American accent, try to copy, like, American artists back in, because that's what they really knew. That's what they would see on the telly and shit like that. Until, until you've seen, like, Skepta, Lethal Bizzle, Wiley, all of them came about, and then they brought, like, the grime about the pirate radios and all that, and then with them bringing that all about, then more and more people started to be like, oh, we've actually got a culture here, we can, we, we've actually got our own thing here, we don't, we copy the Americans, we can like build our own authentic, like, and then after the back of that, they obviously got a lot bigger, and then people, more and more people started getting involved, and it's just, it's grew into what it is now, now you've got grime, drill, like, England is just like, fucking, urban garage, it's like New California almost, man, with the way the music's gone, you know what I mean, so, and it's, it's happened the same thing up in Scotland now, and, like, people have always tried to copy, like, English artists, even American artists, some people in Scotland will try and copy, just what they're seeing on the telly and what they're hearing on the radio. So, for that, then, I don't know, I, I was doing it to start with as well, when I first ever started, I was doing an American accent, man, to like, like, figure things out a wee bit more. But we've still got that, I know, people. That's you get comfortable with your own voice and rapping, do you know what I mean? I wasn't, at first I wasn't comfortable, I was going, like, everybody was telling me I need to rap my own voice, and I was just like, no, this works better, like, listening to two pack tunes all the time, like, no, I need to sound like this. Fucking, I even for about a year or something like that. I kept on doing that. Just when I was when I first ever started trying to put rhymes together and stuff like that. And it was with Sherlock. He was always rapping his own accent. And fucking just just sitting with him all the time. I was like, oh fuck, I'm gonna have to try and do this. And he's doing it. I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna do it. I uh, basically when talking to I'm had uh, Loki as well. I, was, I bumped into him when I just first started rapping. And he was telling us he just told us the same thing. He didn't have a Scottish accent. I just for there. I felt I felt as if my tunes I could write a lot better tunes in a different accent than that man. But like I just had to sort of start from scratch almost in a Scottish accent. Right. Just get finding my flow on that again. What but, do you think of Scottish rappers nowadays? Like, where there is so many people like yourself, McCoy, Sherlock, Triple O ones. Do you know what I mean that are kind of rapping in? You know, triple O ones kind of, but are rapping in that Glasgow accent and not actual accent. Even Sherps, like he's rapping in that Dundee accent. Do you know what I mean? They're using their local accent, and then you still get people from Glasgow, still people from Scotland trying to be English. Mm -hmm. Is that just so they get the views and maybe go a bit quicker, or is that how they think they sound? I think it probably just comes easier to, them to make music like that, because it's it's what I'm used to listening to, I'll sit listening to that, like headphones all day, like younger generation, so it's just like, basically what we'll listen to, what we'll hear the radio constantly. And then when they're putting it together, it's no life experience that they're writing, most of them, most, if they're, well, 99% of them, if they're, if they're following that sort of like, drill sort of thing, and doing that English accent, most of them are just copying like same sort of bars, like hearing that different drill artists down, down south, and then just kind of rearranging it a bit, I saw it, so it's really happening, it's just kind of re getting recycled and recycled in it. But that's a lot of just English rap, is the same bars say different. No, no, I don't see, that's why you need the authenticity, you need this with people that stand out, the original people. People come tell their stories, people bring their own sort of bars to the scene, people... There's a wee guy, wee Muller, I don't know if you've seen him, man, but I have like him, he's, he's smashing it in it. There's, there's, there's a few just... Two of them, eh, that's... He James as well. One, aye. Aye. Him and his pal, I've got a song together on that, so I knew about him, aye. Just, just we've gone with the accent, but I can just talk on it oh, 100%. Well, man. Oh, I like, and they only try to change it or do anything different, like, and I think the more younger people like that that do it, it will get bigger, like, but, do you know what I mean, you and Sherlock and that, these have got the views, like, it's not like the views are only there, like, same with McCroy, Oxy, like, Shogun, these have all got views, like, 
It's just a case of marketing it properly and all that now and just finding the right way to do it. Aye, so running it like a business instead Basically, of aye. just a rapper. It's good enough from one hand, for years this is the stage I'm at right now, so I can make the tunes now. I'm, I'm, I'm making the tunes, so, but like I know we can all do the tunes, but it's the other side, the business side of things that I've been studying now, and how to promote things properly, how to get things out to the right audience, how to make sure like the music's doing what I'm wanting it to do, you know what I mean? Do you think like targeting overseas would be easier, so like English speaking countries and that? Because obviously you have sort of been probably in Glasgow, do you know I, mean, I think, for so long. I think there's probably a better chance of getting known in America than there mm-hmm. is in England at this point in time. Do you know what I mean? Just because I, I think, think India or something like that, where it's just a pure huge English speaking population, like. I, I think just abroad somewhere. There's still a lot of people in England that just don't like you for being Scottish. I, I, I <laughs> don't so, like them for being English. So, I, fuck them. Like, so we've got that issue. Ah, fuck them. <laughs> Should they get for being English? <laughs> Aye, well, so we need to just build the own structure up here. That's the only way we're going to really get it forward, man. Like we can't just keep fucking knocking at the door in London. Like, can we, can you let the artists in? We need to just have people like we need to have our own structures, our own Scottish music people. That, that, so. Obviously, BBC is a huge radio station, right? But see, BBC Scotland is mm-hmm. that Scottish? Like, could Scottish artists go to them, like you and Mother, all of these people, and be like, "Can you play my song?" Did they play? Did they play songs if you said the word? Aye. So, like, all it would take is say maybe fucking every single week, ten years sending in fucking a track each. It would. It would work. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Help. Like, it just with people only really like working like that. People only really like on the business side of things. I've sent. Two tunes in, I think both times have been played as well, man, so it's something I really need to start sending it. I think you can play it once, once a month as well. Five, like, every artist picks a week, fucking, boom, ten years their own. There's got to be ten Scottish artists on the radio singing or rapping. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, It'd be good to see if it was like a label, a good label or a good management company, it was just to take everything on. And be able to just know all the behind the scenes, just had all the right connections in the industry and all that. And just take on all the people who were talented enough to get the views and do the numbers, just put them to work, give them the tasks to do. You make a fucking fortune, mate. That would be a good manager, but then you also listen, well, I listen to people like Bugs and Malone saying, talking about independent, doing it on his own. That is well, that. so that's, like, that's what I've been going for for that's all these what years. That's what I ask, like, would you rather have a label behind you, or would you rather do it independent, knowing that you've done everything yourself and you've not fucking sell yourself or done anything to him, do you? So it'd be more rewarding, obviously, being able to do everything yourself, but I would take a deal along the way, see if I was to get offered a deal for, like, Five tracks yeah, or something like that, or an album or something like that. Like, say we're going to give you like two hundred grand to give you like an, I don't know, a five track album or something like that. I'd make sure the five tracks are banging, make sure they're all going to be hits, and fucking recoup the money for them. Know what I mean, make sure I was getting getting great. paid, man, right? and then use that two hundred investment to go and build my next music project yeah, and do it and properly and independently. And the experience but you need to, got, right? it's, it's like Dragon's Den, man, because it's good to do it independently. Like, you, you see businesses that are thriving independently, but when you've got the support of these, like, in that, it would be the Dragons. And this is like the people, the managers and shit like that, when you've got the support of all them behind you, then they've got the connections with all these right people. People on, like, the telly, or fucking, just, just on all these wee small things, the magazine people, like, all these things that you wouldn't be able to get yourself. So it's good. To, I think you need a run with them for a while, and then you can go independent. Just to get your name out there. But to get your name out there to like the mainstream masses, it would be good to like similar to what Chipmunk done. I think years ago he had his name through like the mainstream and then he went independent yeah. after it all. Same with Dappy. Yeah, so a lot of artists have done it when they get their name out there, everybody knows who they are, and then they just take full charge. I know you're gonna know like this next one, but I think Drake stole Dappy's fucking flow. Right for the start. Drake stole every kid's flow. I was about to say, I know you've got your theory on Drake, but <laughs> Aye, fucking, he will still die if he's full. Fucking, I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> but I like, you are getting the views, like, and stuff like that, so I don't understand how it is in the bone, like, just some of your tunes, like, sides with you and Sherlock's 200k, fucking, that cipher with always on it, like, you, Ransom, fucking Shogun, eh, McCroy, Oxy, that's it, fucking 200 k as well, like, uh-huh. It's getting views, it's not like it's no getting views, it's just obviously, as you're saying, the market and all that, and where it's getting views. Uh-huh. Me, fucking, your pals, watching it a hundred times earlier last year. Yes, people I mean? got everybody's got all those other music, this. I just need a good to get on board now and realise, like, boom, who is this in Scotland? Do I have to back it up? I've got to see, right, oh. Scottish, actual Scottish artist here, who's, who's the rest of them? Uh, hopefully, it just becomes a UK hug instead of just like an English based hug. But even Ireland, 
like Ireland's, Ireland's got a great scene, aye. Also get it Ireland. Like Ireland's got a good scene, like I really like the eight six gang like Inc and that mm-hmm. fucking mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And they're all I don't even know if they're saying a label, but they're all fucking doing it here in Ireland. It's not like we're chatting on London store. So oh, as you're saying, maybe Scotland just needs it's ready manager. to just just it's just ready to blow so it is, man. It's just fucking one tune, one, one big tune away for just fucking being up, man. Then then what we need to do, but it's a bit of big tune. We imagine like two or three years on it, mm-hmm. like the fucking you and Sherlock summer tune last year, fucking or the year before. Uh, that's a fucking banger. But you released it in August, you fud. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like you released it at the end of summer. It was by the time the video guy had it all edited and that, we got it shot at the start, but by the time it was all done, man, it was fucking... Too late. Too late, man. Too late. Should I just kept it for the next we've, summer? We've got an old tune, but I'm in that one. I don't even really like that tune at me, Sherlock, I don't know, summer tune. I'm just really? We're just kind of flung it together, but we've got an old tune, man, of fucking... The other tunes I've been doing recently, I've been putting a lot more time into writing them, making sure the bars are right, everything just has to be hard hitting, I want everything just to be like... Just top tier standard, every tune I'm writing, I think to myself, who's the best in the UK, and I think to myself... Right, I want to write better than them. You know what I mean? I want right. to just feel it. Like, I want you look from no own part, it has to be better. I think myself, if they would if they would write something like this, then cool if they would if they would scrap it then I'll scrap it, sort of. Right. Just try to put myself on that level, I was isn't it? Kind of ability for it though as well, instead of just putting it out. Like, mm-hmm. Knowing that you've got the reps in there, do you know what I mean? You've got your practice. So it is now just release banger, banger, banger. So I've got them all sitting, I'm still just building there and I'm visualising how I'm going to, how it's all gonna go as well this time, man. So I don't know, before I used to, I just got to shoot every name for have a, have a chorus for my songs, I would just have bars written and on, on the train or on the bus when I first started writing, I would just, just pull out a newspaper, pull out a word for the newspaper and then just write a chorus to it and then by the time I get my headphones in, by the time I get to the studio I just go and record it and that's how unorganised I used to be. I think, but that's a talent as well, like if you were to tell me fucking pick a word and you've to write a chorus or even write something that fucking rhymed with it for a few lines, I would struggle with that, so do you know what I mean, it is a fucking a skill in itself, mm-hmm. but I I would imagine having everything prepared and planned so that when you walk in the studio, you're fucking ready to go would be the way you should be doing it through the start. Like. Oh, definitely, so right at first when I started making music as well, man, didn't it really blow first because I was genuinely just rushing things and I'm just at a mad pace, like it was nothing was, every time I was at a studio, I didn't want to take everything, rushing through it all and then boom, putting it on SoundCloud, just releasing it straight away, like, nothing was even getting mixed off the time, man. I, I went on for about, <laughs> about four years or something like that. I was going to say, I found a bunch of your songs <coughs> the last few days that I had never heard. So, you, MCD, and Sherlock on your SoundCloud, mm-hmm. Hype Up, and there was one other one for the praise. I had never heard them before, and I was like, these are fucking class. Like, <laughs> but that, like, even MCD, I, it's pure Glasgow. Like, you can tell he's our Glaswegian, the praise. Like, I 100% would. And that's what I like about it. Like, you're no listening to fucking Dave rapping about London or fucking some cunt rapping about London and stabbings and shootings in London. Like, I'd rather hear about stuff that's happening in Scotland. Mm-hmm. And that should be everyone in Scotland, I think. It's getting on me. It is getting there. Compared to when we first started, there was no doubt it was really on board, man. But Who? Sorry, anyway. Yeah, okay. just, just when we first started, man, they was really on board with it. People were just like a bit of it first. Everybody was listening to MC tunes. So that was that was that was like, oh, we didn't listen to Scottish rap, man. We just put on an MC, we just put on MC tunes instead, and then air so time. So big. My air, air time just fucking it just started transitioning, started like, fading out a bit more for the MC tunes and more more rap stuff. more more people started getting involved with it. Before you know, every couldn't stay in it, man. But I remember at one point, Nakem was rapping. Yeah. Like, Nakem. I was just about to ask, who do you think was like the pioneer? Who do you think that was the first person rapping, like the first Scottish rapper? I honestly couldn't tell you, I don't know. I have the idea, because I always, I sit with cunts sometimes that are, uh, have been rappers that have been in the scene for years, they'd be like, oh, what about Higgy if you back your day that it started it, that, that, I have the idea who these cunts are. But, when I first started rapping, it was me, Sherlock, used to just sit, in, I think it was his gaff back in the day, but, but my, my, my ma's gaff, or his ma's gaff, who was sitting, and fucking we just go type in Scottish rap on YouTube, and the cunts would pop up, I think, who did we used to see, it was like, Mad Hat McGoa, and Mog, that was like the two, that was like the two first in, I think Loki and that, but like, I think Mad, Mad Hat McGore and Mog was like, they were like the kind of scheme of things, the, old, like the older generation after yeah. like before us. So, I don't know, we used to kind of watch their tunes and stuff like that. A lot of Mog tunes as well, man. Fucking, I was just like, 
the, the generation before us. So we felt, I think there was a guy, Hector Bezerta, I think that was the band's name, Louis Boyle, something his name was, but we used to watch his tunes and that as well. He ran a wee group in Postal at the time, and I fucking ended up popping in once or twice when I was cutting a book down there. And then, I mean, I just, that was when I was just starting to get into the music a wee bit more, and just starting to tell like, who, who was who in the scene, what was all happening and whatnot. So I was still rapping in an American accent. Uh, is that Mad Hat McGowan that? Were they not like battle rappers? Like they'd done fucking. I don't think mad that was. I think a lot of them were at that time, but it was like that was what was happening in Scottish rap back. That scene's still quite big. For the battle rap stuff. Aye, the battle rap in Scotland. There is still a lot of it happening, man. I don't aye. think it's as big as what it was back then, but it is still happening quite a lot. Like a bunch of people I know used to go to it at Kelvin Grove and just watch it, fucking before I even knew about Scottish rap, and that's how aye, it aye. sort of got introduced to all the people in Scotland. It was like the battle rap, just people slagging each other. That's you see like, Sherlock's battle at Kelvin Grove. Aye. <laughs> Aye, I've watched that. He's fucking haircuts are built up. Oh, that's bad. Mad to see him with hair. <laughs> but what about that? Aye. It was the first thing that popped up. See, when I seen that and I had seen his hair, I was like, no chance. Like, he's not been bald his whole life, are you sure? <laughs> Can I say? Yeah. So fucking, <coughs> they sort of people were the first people you looked up to in Scotland, like, or seen in Scotland rapping. And doing it in a Scottish accent. Basically, but, aye. I remember at one point me and Chrissy were all sitting. Well, aye, hopefully we can get to that level. Hopefully, because hopefully we can get to that level. Because in Scotland, know who we are as Scottish rappers. Not I mean, all that be just. Like, imagine if we can get to the top of the like, Scottish raps. And we used to say, and all that. Like, we used to make a mad plan. And we'll go there. We used to tune after tune after tune until it's fucking the wall there. But fucking. I mean, I'd just, say you're learning. I'd, I'd say you're learning. Doesn't aye. really seem much like a challenge. Now I'm just like, right, boom. It's happening with the rest of the world. Aye. Fuck the UK, fuck England, the world. Oh, right. mate, definitely, man. It was too too easily achievable. Right, I get comfy, can you move this, mate? This pulls back in it, like your spine. Oh, aye. Aye, mate. Aye, get, get chill. Oh. Pull it back if you want. Sorry. Fucking. So, apart from that, everyone obviously knows you train, you see that you fight and you do all that, and you're an active guy. What do you think is harder, standing in front of 500 people rapping? Right, or getting in a ring and fighting. Um, yeah, that's hard, don't it? Which Mate, more nerve-wracking? Maybe the fighting. Because you know, if, like, there's, there's a chance you could get knocked out, get caught on video. You know yeah. what I mean? Then fucking... World star! That's you, fuck, you know I mean? There's a chance that you could get fucking sparked clean out and turn it into a meme. We performing on a stage, as long as you perform, as long as you, as long as you practice, as long as you rehearse, all right, then you're not really worried, you're, you're buzzing for it, to be honest. I'm or anyway, man, I just, I look for old men to perform on stages now. But the more you do things, the more desensitised you are. So the more, the, I've obviously say. performed a lot more on stages, so that's why I probably find fighting a bit more. Aye. Whereas for you, it'd probably be the opposite I for you. I've got to say, I don't think I could stand in front of people and... Even like speaking and that would be hard, I think, instead of singing and no fucking up. Well, getting in a ring and fighting some cunt, that's easy. Like, aye, aye, I'll aye. do that tomorrow if you want. Like, <laughs> like, that's easy. It's just what you're used to, man. That's it, I I just wasn't sure, do you know what I mean? I can imagine fucking standing there in front of all the people and then you just forget a line, you've fucked it. Like, especially if it's fans and they know you've fucked a line or they're singing along with you. Like, Nah, because I fucked it a good few times and I managed to fucking just recover it. I'll, I'll, I'll miss a bar and I'll just be like, yeah, wait, yeah, wait. Fuck yeah. it. I'll just go through every full place and just shout and I'll realise I fucked the bar. I think it's just part of the tune, man. So you need to play it half sometimes. That's also a good experience. You can't really play it half and you get sparked out, you know what I mean, man? You're like, right, I didn't know. I was only taking the fall, I was getting on, I feel. Aye, aye. There's been a few times I've fucking stood back up and I've been like, I'm fine. I bet Liam, you were lying down for 30 seconds. No, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> aye, you were out, mate. Like, you were sparked out. Aye. Aye. So, aye, that is embarrassing. But with experience, you can't really just play that off. You just go, well, it's another fight. I lost against another highly ranked fighter. Sound, let's go next one. It's a learning, it's a learning game. Aye. That's mental, though. Like, just when you said that and then you fucking knock out and then your new song, That World Star Bar, it just popped into my head, it's a uh, delta. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch lines, man. But uh, as well as fucking RM being like the first cunts in Scottish rap, but I'd say there was nobody in the schemes that was rapping. No, no, no scheme cunts were rapping apart from uh, until me and Chris had started. Like there was no cunt at all. Like, 
fucking when I started people were like what the fuck like Aye. remember up my way everybody's like this kid's rapping we've done a music video like what the fuck's going on so if you went alright how many it's fucking that, cheeses mate. you on like, this shit must have been terrible and I was like very first tune I ever done man so at the time I thought it was brilliant and all the time mate, like, I, it, it, I was fucking I was like oh the tune man and now if I fucking see, like back I've erased after. every fucking trace of it I've read see when I think back to the student the video and I'm just like what the fuck's I thinking man the first few tunes I put out have you got them somewhere though that you could watch? No, like, mate, thank nah. fuck I do not, man, honestly. Nah, do you know what I mean? Like, see fucking 10 years' time when you're fucking worldwide famous and worldwide success, it'd be funny to fucking go here, watch your strips. This is how shite I was, like, and oh. hear other cunts that fucking boost. Oh, wait, that's how fucking he started, like. No, I've got, 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 good. I've got a tune I've done, man, and I'm at an American accent on a CD. But it was part of that, I had fucking Gaelic, I had Celtic Connection thing, it was like I had Gaelic fucking film, I had Gaelic music festival thing, and I brought Sherlock, man, this is when we two started doing it, that was when we first ever just started, like, what do we rap? Went to this place, my auntie told us about it, Ernie Stohus, got a bus at Elnora, and fucking, it was like a mad janitor, cunt, he let us in, it was like a studio in a uni place, it was a choir, a church choir, and we just went there and he was letting us in the studio. Uh, went in, figured out it was pure basic recording. Like you could, you could probably like, record better. The guy was just hitting like, one button. To be fair, we went in, recorded the tune. And everybody else, I was see that B O B airplanes tune. Done a remix to that, so we had people singing in it and letting Gaelic know that man. I mean, I done a verse on it. So That's still, pretty cool to be fair. I still got that. Well, my man's still got that on a CD. I've been trying to get it to get ready for years, man. But she's like, oh, no, I don't do that. I love that tune. I'm like, fucking hell, don't ever let anyone hear that. I'm going to fucking no, go man. ask your mother for that tune. No. If they will get it out, don't worry. No, it's on a CD. It's, it's no in fucking digital format. And she's a dinosaur with digital stuff, so thank fuck. <laughs> That's pretty I'm cool, that. though. Aye, it's hidden, aye, but it's still cool that you've done it with fucking Gaelic connections and fucking. Do you know what I mean? Part it, was of a, that. it was mad. We, we'd done a show and everything, me and Sherlock, mate, and fucking it was like the Guilty Connection show. I was still rapping the American accent. This was like my first few months of rapping, but. And they told us, because we had to do something that was Gaelic, and I, didn't, I was like, I don't know any Gaelic, and he's like, there they are. So fucking, we wrote a chorus, and then they, they took it and then translated it into Gaelic, and we had to memorise all the Gaelic, like, the Gaelic chorus, the real one, all the words, we had to go edit and edit until we memorised it all, and then we performed it, so we did. Fucking. How was the flow? Is that like can that happen? I don't even know. Can you just change your language, your tune, and the flow? No, that's the same. Or <sighs> there was no flow, mate. There was no flow involved. <laughs> there was just speaking into fast. Yeah, we just there was just speaking Gaelic, mate. Fair enough, mate. Uh-huh. I fucking don't know any Gaelic, and I'm Scottish, so you know more than me. Like you barely remember it now, mate. Fucking we memorised it back then, but ah, you admit, like, <laughs> but. What do you think so far in your career is the best moment and also the worst? The best moment in the musical career? In your musical career. Um, the best is definitely yet to come, isn't it? Oh, 100%. But uh, so far. So far. In your own show or? The most successful of it? Or the, like, no, just your the best, best moment. moment. Moment it made you fucking like yaps. Might be a tune that you made or something. Um, I think maybe when I made that tune recently for first bus, and I said, I said like, like we sent it after him, they approved it all and all that, and fucking everybody was all heavy loving it. I old, fucking love it. And the way she writes, you wrote fucking the wheels in the bus. So aye, yeah. all these, it was mad, you know, it was mad about it, like. No, even the fact about like the money or anything like that, it was the, the mere the fact, it was all these like. Older people sitting in an office, like, like all these older like English people, and I just I just did not expect it to be like my kind of fan base, but we're all just sitting there, like, got talking about my music, and we're all debating about it, and I don't know, I just it was just a mad, it just be, it was just mad, mate. just a mad feeling seeing like the way my music can be. So that's pr- probably the best thing about my music, but it's, I get messages constantly, like every day, every second day, people like that, uh, just it's just constant. It's, it's, People telling me I'm helping them or my music gets them through the store. I'm heavy stone up the store my words and yeah, I just realised that cake's in this. Sean was right. People say, always saying, is it my music? Always say, thanks for you keep doing these tunes. It gets me through the day and all that. Like, sometimes I'm a bad day, I'll put one of your tunes on that can remind me of can, how to get through things and all that. I'm like, I don't even realise, I don't write it for the reasons, but like, it's good that it does have that effect. Aye. 
well, if you listen to fucking the story of my life, like, that tune, if MD's ever having a bad day and they listen to that, they're like, right, well, my day's better. Like, I know, I suppose. But you probably wrote it. Like, no meaning it as that way, but I was just it therapy, I was just writing that I was about to say that. I, 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 mean, I, I, I can't even listen to that, you know, I've not even listened to it since I wrote it. I'd, when I could try to put it on, I'll get that off me. It's fucking, don't I sit in somebody's presence or listen to that? It's pure cringy, man. Like, but, do you know I, what I mean? I cringy, man. I just, I've added to delete it and all that. Just, I've had so many messages about it. People say, send me, like, oh, this is definitely like, probably your best tune and all that. I'm just like, Phew. I just, I've done it just because I felt I had to do it. No, just, it wasn't like, I don't know, mate. It was just like, sometimes you get that mad feeling, but I'm mad urge you need to, like, I'm mad. Release. Aye, mate, but it's like, it's just that, see, your conscience telling you, right, this is something you need to do. And it was like, I, was some, I had that for ages, and I was like, I need to write a tune, I was always just putting it to the back of my mind. But fucking, once I've done it, I just felt better for it. But recently I've got another one that's like that, but just a lot better. Obviously, I learned for that one, where I could have done better, where I went wrong, where I went right with it. And then just, it progressed, it was about three years ago, something I made that, so I progressed a lot, just as an artist as well. I've been writing an all tune, man. The next one's gonna be a lot bigger than that one. It is a better tune. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is I therapy for yourself, but people can listen to that on a shit day, and it, as well as it being talking about the rough stuff in your life and that, it picks them up because it rhymes and it's nice and it's a good flow. And do you know what I mean? It's a good song. Like, so even if you're having a shit day and listening to that shit, then that picks you up a wee bit. And the same way other tunes that you've got, like the Sherlock Summer tune, I can't remember what it's called now. It didn't want me, I think it is. It was just I the name of the chorus, we just wrote that one. But, like, you just put that on, man, and you're, like, you're smiling because it is just a pure vibe. Like, you can just sing along and fucking bob along, and it's the kind of tunes that you want to listen to. Do you know what I mean? Instead of, oh, I don't even know fucking our band, but just singing about depressive shit all the time, whilst you gave an actual story, like, People learnt stuff from that about you that they might not have known before. Oh, I feel it's good to connect with uh, your fan base so they know, they know you more on a personal level as well. Aye. And it's like, you know, well, I've seen Bugsy talk me about that on a podcast or an interview ages ago and I've, I've just taken note for it. They definitely learn <coughs> fucking everything there is to know, do you know what I mean? It's not like you hide anything for anyone in that song or that. Like, you're just an open book, which for a rapper, like, for me, that's. That's fine, like you've just told yourself, you've just been open, but you've got an ego and an image to protect as a rapper, and do you know what I mean? Being so open and vulnerable, like I think as well, that's fucking, you're showing people your different side, you're showing people that you're diverse mm -hmm. as well, and connecting with that fan base and being them, here, this is kind of what I've been through. If you are similar, obviously listen along. If you're not, this is how I grew up. Like it's just a lot of listening to it like, when I grew up listening to Eminem and shit like that. And the way he would put like, his tunes were just like therapy almost. The, the, the way he would put things together, to, like, get his story out there, but he would also be able to like make a good tune of it as well. So I just I was trying to do shit like that, man. I just realised the fucking posters behind me. <laughs> 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 Last one. Uh, FTP for all the people. Mm -hmm. Fucking go listen to it. But it is a cool thing now. Like, there is you, Sherlock, fucking Shogun, Ransom, fucking McCroy, all these people for. Like, we, Chrissy, uh, we, James, Chrissy, my brother, like, all these people to like, come up. And then he's on the dicks, so he's can go. Oh. I've got a few questions. Do you mind if I come to the studio with you one day or can I meet you one day? And these, these people can now ask you. Like, they can go straight to the top of the game in Scotland and be like, here, how did you do that, by the way? Or what is it you do this on? Do you know what I mean? And they can get mm -hmm. that. And then the same way, the video side of things, like fucking uh, Wee Gary and stuff like that, like 1250 and they kind of places, being able to do the videos with the on sites and that, that's all fucking making it better because you are getting that high quality production now. Instead yeah, definitely. of definitely. It's probably your first few videos were fucking a Nokia brick. <laughs> then impossible. <laughs> Mary Hill fucking. Do you know what I mean? So everything is sort of grown in that sense where you're going to be fucking uh, in a few years able to help everyone but also 
probably be in a position where you will be that manager if you wanted to be. I definitely. You like, can help yourself first before you can help everybody else, man. But like you'll have the experience then where as you were saying, if there was one in Scotland it would be cool. You could start it. Like it's just getting my music can pop off first, getting the money into it and then I can start building other things off it, man. But I think the priority is just getting the music, man. But so I mean, even with the video just in every single aspect of it, pure like like I used to just rush everything, mate. I just even I, I just turned up at the studio with half a tune done, finish writing it at the time, record it, and just say, like, be at 15 I'd just ask him, like, grab a camera, we need to shoot a video for this. Just walk about and then just find random four, five different random places. Just put all into the camera and then fucking go and upload the video or a day or two. But no, when I'm doing the videos, I'm well for the new ones. I've got that new bag put one, that one call on the beat for me. Yeah. I've got, I've just got, I've got a vision what I'm going to do, man. I'm going to. I don't want to say it all in this one, you'll see it man, but I'm got, I've been writing all in my whiteboard, all the different sketches, all the different characters I'm going to have in it, what, what outfits people are going to be wearing, what scenery, what colours sketch, what colours I'm going to have clashing with each other and all that. Making just, a movie. I am, just honestly. Because see, for working with, when I've done that thing with First Bus as well, so I've, I've done a tune for them, and basically they're getting other people to do the video, and people, other people are going to like, lip sync my, my lyrics, but when they showed me it, they showed me they flipped through all these scenes that they had drawn, like something you'd seen, like a, a Hollywood film or something, it was all, all sketched out and black and white. It's like, right, so I've got to do this scene and then it flicked me, it was on a digital format, and then went to the next one and it's, like, it's going to be like this. And then it was just, it was all sketched out, just showing how it was going to be. So they had a pure, clear visual image of how the video was going to look before it was done. Right, and I'd, I'd never done that before. So if you've seen that, I was like, right, cool, I'm going to take note for this. I'm going to start doing this in my own music videos, man. But this is always what I do for tele, for tele campaigns and stuff like that. So the <coughs> idea on that will be released? It was supposed to be the end of January. But I'm not sure what's happening with It's a belter of a song, by the way. You can mm -hmm. hear it on your telly soon and your fucking YouTubes and that soon. The first bus advert, but it is a belter. Aye. The wheels of the bus go round and round remix. <laughs> My Wayne Hinks, Melrose sings the wheels in the bus now. So it's cool. He told his nursery and everything that <laughs> Dad's friend sings wheels in the bus. Like, Dad's friend made wheels in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I let him hear it, I was like, My friend made this. And I, he's nursery now, thinks he's in the wheels in the bus, so... Technically, I did, man. I would, I, I would take it. this better. generation. Aye, for this, well, that's the thing, see, in technically, <coughs> that's the one they'll probably be singing about, Gladiator. Hope uh, so, man, I hope so. Be rapping, you fucking, the wheels in the bus go round and round. <laughs> uh, Hopefully, man. It'd be funny as fuck. It'd be great. You had food. I had food. Uh, I mean, I've got a box bar earlier on, man. Did you? Aye, it was bad, mate. So I was just wondering, I was just like, would you get food on your way home in your list though, and what would you go for? Oh, I'll just get milkshakes or something like that, man. I'll just get some mad sweet treat on the way home. I was going to say, since you're not in a fight camp, you can actually eat. How hard nah, was yeah, that? Man. So how hard was going into a fight camp and then having to diet and actually cut weight and, do you know what I mean? Even though it wasn't a lot of weight, you still had to cut weight and diet and being yeah. munchied would be a problem. It was fine until the night before, mate. Until we fucking had to lose a two kilo. I mean, just did it all, by the way. <laughs> I'll put a video in of him the day Aye. before. I thought um, I was doing all right, man. It was, it was tough. But I didn't miss a day of jogging. I didn't miss a day of hill sprints. I didn't, I didn't, didn't skip fucking one bit of training, man. So some of those days I just couldn't be arsed. I was like, fuck, I was a killer as man. I can't not be arsed running up this hill. But I got it done. So it was rewarding once fucking we got, I got a result at the end of it after putting the work in. Then after it, mate, I'm just my, my diet's been uncontrollable, man. I need to get a grip. I need to fucking I need to get myself back in shape. The Paddy Pimlet diet. Aye, I mean, the Paddy Pimlet diet, man. Finish your fight and get as fat as possible. But after but that, I need to get back. I need to get back in shape, man. But that's it. You've no go to fighting. You're focusing on the music and then now. You'll be fighting later in the year. Like you've no go a rush. Do you know what I mean? It's aye, aye, aye. Priorities yes. first. So dialed into the music, you know, man, honestly, I'm just fucking in a mad state, man. It's like, see, when I first ever started making music, when I was like, I think it was just before I turned 18, man, I was like, so, so, so driven. At first, I watched a man two pack DVD, got me into it, and then just watching the way he was in it, it's like, pure, like, you know, what the fuck's everybody cut slacking for? He's like, we need to make three tunes a day. He's like, I've, I've made two albums in two weeks or something like that, he says, and it. he's like, why the fuck's everybody else making one tune a, like, fucking a week or something like that, and heavy on cunts? I'm like, fuck's sake, and then put on my work and we're all getting the results. And I was like, fuck's sake, well, obviously that's it's possible, it's doable, it's like humanly possible, why the fuck am I not doing that? So I, when I first started rapping, I was just reading three tunes a day, the tunes was probably shite, man. 
probably know what like, name on the other tunes I'm doing now, but like, I was making sure I was getting three tunes written every single day, just writing what box I was. And it fucking, I was just so driven. Like every single, uh, every single thing I could have possibly done, I done it. Like I went down to the mad music school and the city centre and all. I just went in, just talking to cunts. Like listen, this is I'm trying to be a rapper. Where do I go here? I just fucking anywhere and everywhere I could go. I was doing it. Fucking. Then I don't know. Air. Like a rapper in Scotland? Are you sure? Uh, it was him who put me in touch with Loki to be fair. And he was him who was telling us like it was like a mentor course. I seen him like three or four times and he was just telling us to say what kind of Scottish accent. And that, that will help us a wee bit. That's cool. But fucking I just I was so 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 driven, mate. So 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 hungry for it, man. Like even that guy at studio in Easter House, I think it two buses, it took us about two hours and that. Fucking I was getting Sherlock to come here with that. Fucking and then at the time, like, first all my tunes, mate, it was just all like, tunes, I was listening to a lot of Tupac stuff, it was every political tunes I was making at first, every tune, all my tunes was just put against the government and that, and just fucking, I don't know, just, you try to use my music for the right reasons, and then as time went on, mate, I don't know, I fucking just, as I got emerged in a scene and surrounded by all the fucking, just the kind of tunes that's happening, and then, I don't know, just getting caught up like, seeing what's trending and now, and then try to follow that, try to, like, like that, that's selling, so I'll, I'll write bars that similar to that and all that, and then just get, get caught, getting caught up in that years, and then things in life just have like thrown us after that and all that. I've just not been fully like, just kind of lost focus of where I, I started off at first. Just not until the last few months or something like that, I've managed to fucking like, realise the reason I started it for and regain my full focus. So I say get that drive back. I suppose for years I've been making music, but I've just been making it with a, a proper purpose, if that makes sense, man. I've, I've been making, I know I've just been, but I'm like, for, I don't even know what I'm making it for. I'm just I'm making these banging tunes just to like, just, just, main, just to maintain where, what, I, what I'm already doing. Like, yeah. I don't know where I'm going, what, I'm, what I want to be. I'm just to maintain it. It's only recently I fucking well, had some of my deep thoughts and been like, like been, why, why the fuck did I start doing this music? This is the reason I need to fucking. This is Push. what I'm doing. Fucking, this is what I could be doing. This is the reason I should, this is what I should be doing with my music. This is fucking, I should start avoid doing this. I should start doing this smell and all that. So, I mean, Became more driven, go back to focus. I mean, it just fucking. This year we fucking. I've got all the mad distractions that I've had before, it's every through as off. Doing what I should have been doing, man. So. If that's it, it's, you've realised that and now you're focusing mm -hmm. is what you need to do. And fucking, if you are learning the business side of it, I'm sure this year will be the year that fucking you will blow. And if you blow, it'll only be a matter of time before Sherlock blows and the Croy blows and all the rest of Scotland starts to pick up steam. It'll just take one of you. But I do think it'll be yourself first. Like, just with the work rate. Like, I don't know, another Scottish artist that is putting in the work that you put in and the amount of tunes that you produce. Like, you try to work smart as well, no hard. Know what I mean? So I've just tried, if I've been working hard as fuck for years, but now I'm trying to work smart as well. I'm just trying to, that's what I'm saying with the business aspect of it. I'm just working smarter and getting it out there the right way. Right. Making sure it is promoted and marketed to the right audience. So, and fucking back to BBC, getting it fucking on there every month. And I love it, I love Stop being a lazy prick. <sighs> Say something, I keep forgetting about it. It's literally always such a lead. Once every day, I'll be like, oh, fuck, I could have done that. Could have done that. But could I can't have, have any spell words in the tune either, man, so I need to get a, a radio edit I send in for them, so oh, all really? the tunes I've got, I'll need to get three bits muffled out. So I mean, you can't oh, have any spell words in it, man. Right, I don't know. Just it's whatever, that whatever, whatever they can play on the radio. So, same question again, kind of thing. Can they not start a BBC Scotland kind of, do you know what I mean, like fucking Charlie Sloth and uh, Kenny Ulster, where it's later at night, at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, where you can swear and can play your music? It'd be interesting to see if they did do something like that, man. So that would be something that would help towards the future, man. I don't think anybody's really put a suggestion towards them yet, so maybe that's something. So we call and push the words. Call and only start it when it fucking. I know. Get it yeah. going, man. Rap Yard Radio. Rap fucking banging. <laughs> Rap Yard Radio. Fucking help me, every cunt here. That'd be a welter. Definitely would. Like, we need that, we need something like that. What do you think about the studios in Scotland? Like, I only know, is it 12.50? Obviously the Rap Yard. And what's that other one? Up to stand up. Up to stand up. Uh, <coughs> they're obviously the three biggest. I've seen a few freestyles coming recently. Like, I don't want to say it's a guy's spare room or something, but it just looks like a room with a blue backdrop with the two blue lights. Six Free done one on it. Uh, a few other people have done one on it. 
Mm. But it just genuinely looks like a guy's back, like, spared room or that. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I guess I bought. Is it? Like, <laughs> her? Fair like, play. Do you know what I mean? Can... I think she's most recently was old, but... But, do you know what I mean? Like, there is only a handful uh, in yeah. Scotland that I can... I know of, no being an artist myself, but what do you think of the studios? Could they be better? Like, what is the best one, in your opinion, in Scotland? The problem with studios in Scotland, man, is, like, people aren't really invested in making... Like, people just want to get a little happy just to get their 30 quid or 40 quid an hour or whatever, like, you're, getting, you're getting paid or happy, just take the payment, just do a quick job and then just give the project back. It's just, like... I don't know, man. I just, I just got caught in a mad system. They're just happy. They just got caught in a routine. They're just like, right, well, they'll do this, give them that. That's my job done. Get paid for it. Go home. Whereas, like, I was going to say, it's a bit cheap. I genuinely thought, like, it would be a lot dearer to go. Nah, it depends where you go to, man. But, yeah. uh, like, with 1250, we kept, because I've worked with him for years, man. He, he's, he's done most of my tunes for years. So, when I work with him, like, he, he knows how I want to sound and, like, it works well. So, like, he'll, he'll spend a lot more time, like, trying to find, yeah, to, to try to bring the sound out and all that, try because he knows how I want it to sound at the same time. Whereas, try to see, sometimes, try, so I'll try to explain that, that some producers will be like, no, I think it sounds better like this and all, and it's like, no, oh, man, just fucking, Do it, I and I, 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 I've not got the ability to say, no, use that mixing tool or that, because I don't even know what the mixing tools are. So, fucking, sometimes it's, it's brutal, like that, for artists, like, uh, You want it to sound a certain way, but you don't know how to do it, aye. Aye, that, and fucking... The dark, the producers aren't really as invested as well, man. There's not really a big producers in, in Scotland as well. So, like, if you're doing Southers, you've got better access to producers that have made, like, oh, I've worked with this guy and we've got millions of views, or I've worked with that guy. Like, everybody in there's getting millions of views and everybody's got big producers that have done this and done that. So, but it's easy, easy to go and sit with these kids and say, like, oh, when I was working with him, he was doing this and it worked for him. So, like, try that. Or, like, but up here, you've not really got that. People are just, like, there's nobody that's really blown. So, you're taking advice to people who's, <coughs> who's nice and hasn't really, like, got anywhere in the past. But there is artists in Scotland, do you know what I mean? So, like, obviously I don't know how different it is, but what's the difference between, a, like, Calvin Harris's producer, or fucking, do you know what I mean? What's that fucking, Louis Capal, <coughs> guy? Uh, like, their producers, do they make their songs down south? Is that the difference? Are they producing their songs in London or in... Oh, probably in America or something, with these bits, man. Right, right, so they're only making... There is no, like, a it studio won't. that they are using in Scotland that's... So you know they, I mean? they, they may be they could, man. I don't know. At one point, obviously, when they started after, they had to have been using something in Scotland, so maybe they could be still working with the same person that they started after. And they've just found their sound the right way. That's what I'm saying, it's good to be working with 250, because once you can find your sound with a producer, like, you can do easily to work a lot easier. So it's hard to get that, but... But I, I, I just wasn't sure <coughs> so if there is, like, obviously these big producers in Scotland that obviously just doesn't get an interest in rap or that, like, but these Scottish artists, shit, I can't even think of another Scottish artist. Apart from rappers, like, I can't. Jerry Cinnamon? Aye, Jerry Cinnamon, like, but, do you know what I mean, will he record his tunes in Scotland, do you think? Probably, he seems like sort of bit probably records on myself, man. I was going to say, he's probably recording them the same way I record the podcast in my no, garage, man. like... And uh, I, again, I didn't, so. I, and, but he knows how to do it, do you know what I mean? He mm-hmm. knows how to make the tunes, so that would be the difference. But I was just wondering, obviously, if there was sort of a producer that's making, do you know what I mean, like, these hits for Scottish artists, if they are in Scotland, why are they not trying to maybe push to work with a few Scottish rappers and make songs that way instead of... You just try to date yourself, like, try to find that producer. As well, there was Sean Prove as well, he's a big producer, but Nine's producer and shit like that, so he done the CD Cypher we all done, he, he made the two beats for that, so he did. So, so for Scott and Cypher, so, but, because when, when you get to a certain level of being like a, a big producer, man, it's quite expensive to get beats after and shit like that, when you're no really making that industry <coughs> money, you're not really, you know, wanting to buy, you know, want to take a gamble and buy a big expensive beat for fucking five grand or something, you know, you don't, you're not guaranteed the return on it. Yeah. I mean, uh, half percent, aye. That makes more sense. The money side of it, I didn't really think of that. Because once producers get to a certain level, they'll get signed to like a, a label, so I don't know, just to be like bigger international labels. They'll sign them. Paramount and that. Aye, aye. All that sort of stuff, Universal, Warner Bros. Yeah. But he's getting more. So it's all right. It's a big thing. Come at me. See what you're saying. It's <laughs> a. <laughs> Don't let it pause. Oh. 
ik ga in de fucking well, we're really fucking talking about 12.50 and all that. Like, 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 you the situation? Aye. So, what ones is there in Glasgow? Like, is there any? The rap yard? Uh, the rap yard's going to be the fucking the main one, so it is. But right now, I've just been using up the standard. Because it's, it's local to his, man. It's, I get on really well with Sammy, the guy who owns it, man. So, like, I just phone him, he'll book us in. He's just always flexible ways and shit like that. Yeah, but go down whenever I've, uh, whenever I've written a tune and I need to get a score lead, I could just phone him and let you go any space. But like, I jumped in, I just jumped in and fucking recorded it basically just as I've written it. And if I can go back home and listen to it, usually I'll send you out on WhatsApp. If you love what you think I'll listen to it a few time, more times and then I'll go and record it again and then get it done properly. That's yeah, it's decent that it's local then, like you're not needing to travel fucking off an hour and hour through to Edinburgh or somewhere every time you want to record a tune. I used to be that, I used to just only go to 12.50 man, that was in Edinburgh. And that was back when I stayed my mask so I was even further away again man, so... I it was like an hour and a half every time I used to want to go there man. And then an hour and a half back, I used to drive there for an hour and a half, sit there and record all day, probably shoot a music video, be there for about eight hours, nine hours, and then drive back home man, it was fucking some journey. Half the time I used to go and pick every cunt up and all every cunt up was maybe doing tunes with or people wanted to go and record, I'd be like, fuck it man, just need else's yeah, heading through, man, so I'd be picking, fucking, just picking everybody up I was doing the tunes with. Since you the fucking driver. But man, notice that, at the same time, I was just trying to fucking bring, bring the scene together, trying to make the music happen, trying to fucking bring things to life, because at, at the same time I was still, the MC shit was still heavy fucking pop at the time, I, I, I was, at the time I was I wasn't even gonna fuck if it was me, it was blowing us. I saw this long some cunt in Scottish raps fucking getting out yeah, there then well, it's gonna get it out there and then fucking I think a lot of things helped show Shogun done a tune years ago and all the band Vulcan. Did you see it? Vulcan aye. So after he done that, another cut started to share remember another cut was sharing it all at that point man, then the cunt's all that right, Scottish raps are hanging there, like fucking But that was I think <coughs> he got so many shares on that because it was just how many scheme. Like there was now a fancy thing, like it was just a scheme video. Like, aye, it was just fucking. It was a flow now when it when it popped up. Oh, it was brilliant. Aye, it did well. It done well, man. Fucking just the the timing and all that. I think it was around about the same time. Stormzy just done that shot up video as well, and it was just like, fucking. He was in the park with all his pals, not, and then it was like a Scot, almost like a Scottish fucking alternative. Yeah. Aye. So people were kind of familiarised with that sort of image with him with a lot of people behind him and all that, man. But it was it was good, man. It was fucking. It was good for everybody at that point. Just look, seeing how, I don't know, everybody, everybody around the world kind of noticed that Scottish rap was a thing. Then people who had doubted Scottish rap before had then just like kind of stopped doubting it at that point. Uh-huh. Then be, everybody was like to me, Chris, oh, you just need to fucking go and blow now and all that, right? It's fucking. So I, instead of kind of like, oh, he's doing rap, it's like, oh, look, look what he's done. If you fucking. Be, before you know it, I think, I think a lot of kids started rapping after the back of that. I think it's probably, like, as well as me and Chris, obviously started rapping, and then we got all the kids and schemes like, involved. Like, after the back of that, I think Shogun had a big part to play with like, a lot of cunts and schemes wanting to get involved as well. I think that Vulcan video like, fucking had a big impact for a lot of people. I showed, I showed a different culture in Scotland. Aye, you, aye. Can, you can express yourself fucking this way and you don't need to just play football. And, do you know what I mean? Or whatever else you do. Mm-hmm. Fucking go for a booze at fucking 12 at the park. You could be writing tunes with your pals. Like, I kind of... I think that's was that we is it James is it we mother and James, mm-hmm. like do you know what I mean like if they've been pals for that long they're still young enough well they've probably been writing since they're fourteen fifteen together oh, yeah. like and learning before they've even done it do you know what I mean like and only had the cunts in their school known about it and then even if they have ten people in their school that fucking support them do you know what I mean that's ten shares for them like by the time they're out of school they're fucking starting to understand the industry, starting to know what they need to do, and then it will happen with the next wins and the next wins, because it is fucking... Just a, it just grows like that, It's just a fucking waterfall effect. <coughs> it will just keep flowing down. Fucking... Just on another thing about fighting, what was your favourite part of the fight? What was your favourite strike or shot landed or... You were getting heat kicked, was that your favourite part? <laughs> you fucking dropped your horns. Aye, mate, aye. Uh, what was my favourite part? There was, there was something I liked about getting trapped and then seeing all heavy celebrating. Because I thought he won the fight and then I bounced back up. Mate, I, have, I, I liked that part, man. Fucking, I, I came straight back into the fight. 
So uh, the start of the second round was probably my, my favourite part of the fight because the boy was probably feeling dead confident. He's like, I've just, I've just put him down, just celebrated, fucking, then the round finished. The pro boy's probably thought he said, I'm going to come back out. I've got to just lose all his fucking confidence here. And I came out on smoke, mate. So... <laughs> What you should have done for the start, put your uh, hands up and let the hands go. Uh, yeah. I know, I know. I just, it's just getting a feel for the fight. I think next time, my next fight, mate, it's just going to fucking, it's going to be a walk in the park, man. I'm going to, I know the training I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be a lot better as a fighter. I'm going to be a lot fitter. The diet will be in place this time, I didn't have a diet in place last time. I'm just going to, I'm going to do everything a lot better this time, man. And I'll be a lot more confident in fighting as well. So, it'll be fun, mate. Ah, uh, it'll be definitely it'll be class this time. This time's gonna go for a highlight reel, man. <laughs> I went for the highlight reel last time, but I didn't quite get it what I wanted. But you I was did like, get a bunch of highlight reels, uh, like a bunch of cool clips. I wanted, I want. I was gutted, man. See when it got stopped and the, we fucking would, it was just that wee stupid kick it got stopped with man. I was hot. I just what I wanted to see the fifth round. I could tell I was tired, man. That, that's, that was the oh, fifth round. Fun. I had trained for that fifth round, bro. I, I had been doing the runs and I'd said to get before the fight. I was like, I'm gonna pace this out in the fifth round and then I'm gonna just go all out, man. Fucking. I started picking up my own wheels, we got on, got into the fifth round and I was just like, yes, like, see how I just, because cause I knew he was tired, it's like when you're sparring with some kind of like, I'm now I can just pick my shots here where I want. It was, I was at that point, the fucking, I was like, yes, he's never to go here, and then boom, the fight got stopped. I was gutted, man. Aye, uh, but he still won. Aye. Aye. He kicked them, he fucking dislocated his two shoulders, like, aye, he won. <laughs> <laughs> aye, fuck it, man. It's a fight game, that's what happens. But, do you think... You'll definitely do it again, like hundred percent, hundred percent. Knowing what you know, you've all the training, the, the I mean, the dieting that's needed, like especially with all the music stuff, like how hard it was trying to mix the both of them. Like, do you think it is something you can do more of, like fighting? Once, once I've got the music thing put off a bit, I will take my foot off the gas. I'll give myself a three month break where I'll just be able to like, die once I'm right in a fight camp for three months. And then just at the end, it'll be, everything will be, I'll give me enough time. If, as long as but I stay. Mate, if the music's pop, math, we'll just go bat a fucking KSI or something like that. <laughs> we'll just I'm ready, I'm tasks. ready. Mate, you would do them, the night would be hilarious. Wait, it, Van, give me Jake Paul, man. Fuck it. Boy them, like, yeah. and I'm being deadly serious. Like, every single one of them, pick, I'll pick them. We'll do them all in one night. We'll pick three fights in one night if they want. Fucking Jake Paul, KSI, fucking Logan Paul. All of them will have a weight advantage on you. Wait till my music box will come back to this. We'll come back to this interview, man. Mate, like, you would honestly light them up. Like, it I'm would ready. be unreal. It would be fucking bad. And and it's not because they're, they're no good, but they're shite compared to you. Like, do you know what I mean? You're going out and actually fighting fighters. They're fighting each other who are playing on the side or doing whatever, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. You're actually putting the work in and fighting oh, fighters, yeah. so it'll be, I fucking would love it. So if Misfits or that see this, fucking get Melrose on, you'll do any of the one. Really? Anyone. Fucking, it'd be hilarious. Imagine that, 100%. like, we go back or KSI or somebody. They would have it with a weight advantage and I wouldn't even give, that's the one time, like, I've gave away lots of weight, like, in loads of fights. Weight doesn't bother me, but that's the one fight for a fight like one of my fighters where I'd be like, oh, I don't care about a weight advantage. Like anyone else, I'm like, <laughs> like when Kev's last fight, he's a, like two fights ago. Sorry, his opponent was a few kilo over. I was like, Nah, mate, go skip, go in the sauna, like go lose the weight. And he did. He went and lost the weight. I don't think he did, but <laughs> that's another story. But do you know what I mean? Like the fucking. They would have maybe 10 kilos on you, even if you were bulking and being 76, 77 kilo. And they're in their 80s, I still reckon you're too sharp, you're too fast, you'd fuck them up, it'd be hilarious. Like, you would expose how bad these people actually are. The good thing is, I'm no, I'm no in the spotlight now, so the longer it goes, I'm still training with you every day and shit like that, man, so... The more, more, time, more time I've got, man, the more fucked it is for them, so <laughs> <laughs> you better just hurry up and get me in, man. The, the, the faster yeah. they get me in, the more benefit. I was going to say, I, they might as well get you in now before you're fucking ready in. Like, just kill all of them instantly Aye, and actually fight world-class fighters instead of YouTubers and that. Oh, so we can get past the first round, man. Aye. Aye. Are you looking forward to the boxing next month? We're going to go watch Nathaniel Collins defend, well, defend the Commonwealth and... Oh, it'll be class, man. Uh, I can definitely see him winning it, mate. 100%. He puts the work in, man. He deserves oh, to win it. He's a machine, like, 100%. I think he'll stop the boy. But I'm really looking forward to that show. Like, uh, that's, that's what I look out for, man. I've, I've not been to a boxing show where 
I've not been to a fight show where I don't need to do anything in a long time. <laughs> like, I don't need to do corners, I don't need to do anything, I don't need to do raps, I don't need to do fucking timekeeping, anything, anything at all I don't need to do. I just get to go, watch, and enjoy the show. And it's fucking Nathaniel going to battle some English guy. Nah, he's class, man, it'll be good to see. I, I can't wait for it. Be a pop party and that'll be class as well, man. Lucky you're not in a fight camp. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you're not in a fight camp. Oh. You wouldn't be getting a fucking after party. Ah, oh, fuck it, man. What's your plans later tonight? Back to writing this tune. I've sat for about five hours writing last night, so I did. So I'm saying, what? Like, fucking. It gets that way, mate. It's like. I just. It becomes a war against boredom. So it does, mate. At a certain point, like, I'm like, right, I cannot be arsed with this. I'm just like, f- do you know what? It's like, what else am I going to be doing? Just sitting fucking. Playing GTA or just like, I don't know, looking through, I don't know, just doing something that's just like, feel wasting my time. And I think right. to myself, I may as well use my time productively here. Like, this is the tune I'm working on as well. It's like fucking, probably the tune that means the most is more than any tune I've ever written before. So, like, where, where I'm dialed in this, I'm thinking, my, I've got this wee voice in my head, like, what the fuck are you doing? Just, why, why are you patching this to go and fucking sit about? Why are you fucking, like, get back wasting in action? Time. Mm-hmm. Well, stop wasting time. Get, get, this, get this fucking mission done. See, I'm, I'm at YC once I've got a task at hand. I can't, I can't sit at risk until I get it's it done. done. Yeah. And see, this certain task that I've given myself, it's, fucking, it's a huge task, so it's, it's, got, it's got to be a heavy time consuming. But I just, when I, even when I woke up today, I've been, I've been writing it all day again a day, and then probably it's going to take me a few more days to write this. It's not just a normal tune on this one, it's probably going to be about eight or nine minutes long. Yeah, so I can, like the fucking story of my life, which is like five, that, six minutes long. Like that, mate, but better, better flow. Everything, the delivery's got to be a lot better. Just be a masterpiece. Oh, it's going to be an absolute masterpiece. I think this could blow for a different reason. I don't think it's going to blow in the sense of like a commercial big tune that comes going to be playing and singing along it, but it could blow in a different sense. Just, uh, which is what music does. Do you know what I mean? It's like Russ that says it. It's a fucking it definitely, definitely got up share this one. So it does. So I'm looking forward to fucking. I'm looking forward to getting it finished, getting it recorded, and being able to sit and listen back to it and stuff like that, man. And just get get it perfected. Well, yeah. After so, I know I've asked you, but you said you're writing them more carefully. So, see, after you listen back to it, how many more times does it get mixed or like, like edited before you release it to the public? Do you know what I mean? So, like, you'll listen to it and go, oh, "This bit needs to be higher." Or yeah, so now, just put kind of rough versions so I can listen back to it and get the flow. Because I'll just go in the studio and I'll just be kind of I'll be reading up my phone and that. So I like to like, memorize it a bit. And then I'll go in, and then I'll record, and I can get the flow of everything. The, the delivery's a lot better and stuff like that. And then when, when I'm in there at a the time, I'll just usually get it mixed. And sometimes, if I think to myself, nah, this, this tune really needs like, an extra bit of work, I can send it away to like, certain people. There's, I've got different people. There's a guy in London I can send it to, and he works with like, a lot of like, big industry artists and all that, so but he's quite expensive compared to MDLs. else. Everybody else is like, barely 50 quid, this guy's too honour. But he's asking him to give me the discount rate on it. Like if I send a tune to him, then I know if it gets mixed and it's going to sound fucking like bang. bang on. I've done an EP, it's called Four, I did it for my wee lassie's fourth birthday, but like he mixed the four tunes on that, I was in London at the point, and when I released the EP, he, he, he mixed all the four tunes on that, so like, that, that kind of gives you an idea. Curve, you mix it uh, well, there's a learning curve, there's, there's, a, there's a four tunes on it anyway, man, but he, he done them all. It was just, just while I was in London that weekend, I was like, fuck it man, I'm going to go and link up with this guy, and then, just show me there's artists in Scotland, but I'm capable. I went and recorded four tunes. I think I had two tunes. I finished writing one, then while I was there, it was like a day before my wee lassie's birthday. I was like, fuck it, just put a beat on. And then I just sat and wrote the full tune while I was there. Went and recorded that, and it turned out alright. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what I was going to say is, fucking, when you do then finalise writing that, like, do you. Do you make a list? Like, do you need to say, right, I want to put this on YouTube and then that's that? Or do you go, I want to put this on fucking Apple, Spotify, blah, 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 SoundCloud, and then... See, I've been heavy slacking with that. That's something I'm really, really, I've been heavy bad. This is where I'm taking action this year, but, like, I've completely ignored Twitter for about five years. Like, I've just not even bothered even using that. I've not even got a TikTok. Uh, just, like, there's lots of apps I'm neglecting. I could be putting my music on advertising it. Well, I was going to say TikTok. Talk's definitely one you need to get on, man, for music. Like, yeah, definitely, just man. Just start putting all your wee shots on and hope. Well, do you know what I mean? It just takes one of the wee clips, eight second clips or ten second clips to blow, and you're fucking viral, and then that song's gone viral. Like, uh, just do that clip. 
Is that not what Peter Andre's kid did? Was it, eh? I'm sure he released Party's song on TikTok, and then it went viral, and then he released another party on TikTok before they actually released the full song. The Peter Andre song? Aye. You know, it's mad to see that guy who I was in, Hingy, the guy who I was just telling you about, I was in London recording that EP with. Aye. When I went in to record that EP, he told me he had just had Peter Andre in the studio before us, saying he was working on a new album. <laughs> That's crazy. That's yeah. mental, man. So that's, that so was that, kind that's of the kind of people he's working with. Like. <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck? I mean, all people, Peter Andre. Peter Andre. But I'm sure that's what his son done. He released part of his song there. Then another part and already had like a million views before he actually released the full song. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, people want to hear the full song because they've listened to 10 seconds it or 12 seconds it and they like that wee bit. So they're invested. So I, you fucking need to get bang on that. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So all that kind of shit, like Amazon and SoundCloud and fucking Spotify and Apple Music and keep putting tunes out so that other Melrose disappears, man. She does my nothing. <laughs> Mate. There's another one as well, man. I don't even you know where he's from, man. There's fucking America somewhere. Fucking that bird's... She's the only place she gets is for me and it's when your song's fucking finished and hers come on by accident. Mate, she asked me for a feature, she had the cheek to ask me for a feature, I was like, I asked her for my name back, I was like, what the fuck, man? Okay, excuse me, can you change your name, please? Uh, can I get a feature with the real Melrose? She's like, ask me, what made you call yourself Melrose? I'm like, it's my name, what made you call yourself Melrose? She's like, I just like the sound of it. Like, kid me on, man, give my fucking name back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm <mad> she <laughs> <laughs> She'll bump my name for no reason. Fucking hell, man. But it is, mate, like, she must only get the place that I gear, like... Aye, there's probably a few people getting on a couple of plays, man. I, well, I'd probably actually just fucking listen to one of your songs and then your EP finishes and it'll fucking come on her song. And I know the fucking first line there halfway by heart now. Like, just because. She knows what she's doing, she's probably got a different name. She probably just made a name under that Melrose thing, so she's like, do you know what, see if I do this and this tune's blow, then fucking... Well, I was going to say, she's probably done it with about ten different people. I imagine that. She's got names and aliases under all these different artists. So when their tunes are getting all sorts of streams, she's getting a hundred thousand streams off the back uh, yet every time. Yeah. Genius. I was going to say, <laughs> I know what I'm doing, I'm sticking a ballet on and fucking waiting for somebody's tune to blow. Put an English accent on. Aye. Uh, go down to London, shoot a video and I'll be sound. Sure, one. I'll show a fucking bunch of videos in a weekend and then I'll have like the next six months worth of movie sound. Wait, right, there's a fucking experiment for you, right? I fucking, if you see a rapper pop up, it's no me, I swear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just pop out of nowhere in London, it's no me. Right. Fucking ripping the pish. I reckon I could do it. I'm so stoned, mate, I've that cake, man, it's amazing. It's definitely certain. Yes. <laughs> I was going to give you merry as well. I'll fucking give you merry to go home with, man. Like, so you can get home the night, man. You'll fucking, if I gave you more than you'd be sleeping here. Fly home the night, mate. <laughs> that would be a good thing, man. Like, if I had gave you DMT or something, like, I might do that. I'll just wait. I'll no tell who it is. DMT on the podcast? I, I'll no tell them who it is or that, and I'll just tell them it's a joint, and they'll spark it, and it'll just be DMT. Like, <laughs> just a DMT joint, and they'll just fucking, what is this? This tastes warm. And it'll be away, and then we can just sit and watch for 15 minute boys and girls and laugh. Like, as this person trips balls, obviously not laugh because that would freak them out. They don't want to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck that. Trim me, you're not in some, you just sit and laugh at you. Uh, if your mates are ever tripping, please do not laugh at them. Like, please do not point or ever look in a mirror. Look in a mirror? mirror. I don't ever look in a mirror when I was tripping. Yeah. What colour is a mirror? <laughs> is, is mirror a colour? No, it's a mix of colours. What I know how I fucking... Oh, fuck. Is it silver? No, it is genuinely a mix of colours because I looked into getting mirror paint. Mirror paint? Aye, I was like, how is this no a thing? Like, I want to paint my wall so it's mirrored for like shadow boxing and stuff so that I can see myself. So imagine like one wall was painted and a mirror. I was like, how is people not created this? It's just a fortune, it is created, and it's just like a mix of a bunch of colours, but it would be cool as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, a mirror paint. Uh, that's mental, mate. That's a funny like... question, actually. It's weird that I knew the answer, actually. <laughs> a little bit. I was okay. that's class, but... Uh, only because I wanted mirror paint for the garage, so, so I could fucking shadow yeah. box. So mirror as a colour. Mirror as a colour. Fucking... It's a weird colour. Fuck looking in one when you're trapping, it's no nice. Right. 
So I don't ever look in the mirror. Do it in a safe environment. Stay safe. But I'll just somebody will be sitting here tripping like as you just spot that. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, kids. And just watch somebody. Is it to my brother or something actually? Just get him, on, get him on for an episode. Yeah. Aye, just talking to Jamie is an extra episode. Whoa. <laughs> Can I take the Uros? Aye. <laughs> I'll just leave him here and walk out. Oh, that one. Uh, try to think what else we've covered, Mum. What do I cover? I'm just chatting. Yeah. But you're going to be more proactive. This uh, year, so we're going to see Mary a presence on Twitter, a TikTok account by the end of this fucking month, so you've got a few days left. <laughs> Aye. A TikTok account. I need to get it all sorted, man. I need, I need to get the right content to fucking. I, I, I'm going to plan. Fucking. How many fucking videos have you had done for you? Like, do you know what I mean? By actual photographer, uh, videographers? Yeah, I don't know, about 100, man. How many of the videos do they have the footage of that you could use as clips? Is what I mean, like. You've got so many, so much footage here that's probably not even used in the music video that you could use. I suppose, but I like, and that could be your TikTok shots or your YouTube shots, or do you know what I mean? Like, that's where you could be fucking learning yourself as well as learning the business, learning how to fucking not even pay an editor, just getting yourself sitting down one night, fucking learn how to edit a few of the things, mm -hmm. like, and be like, right, sound, I can fucking post a video every couple of days for myself instead of and it will be that high quality because it's done by a videographer on a proper camera but it's just you sat and made it because you're bored instead of writing your bars it will be another thing I suppose mate but I'm just some just dialed right into these bars right now honestly so I've seen a hell cut and a shave mate honestly so I look at it I'm just I can't be I've been taking the dog out I've been looking after the walk fucking looking after the walk mate I said, Take the dog a walk, mate. Take the dog a walk. Look after the dog and taking my walk. I'm stoned at my up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do that, mate. And it's just straight in, straight onto the laptop, mate. Boom, just bars on, bars on, bars, man. Wrote so I've, I've scrapped a few tunes as well, man. But I'm just I'm writing so much recently. So even the ones I've scrapped, I've still got the chorus. He's not sitting there. It could be be good for all tunes. So I mean, I'm just does writing. that work? So like. Sometimes no other time, but so, there's some, a certain amount of us. They'll just write a tune and then they'll just. Go through different beats. You memorize the bars, and then I'll just go through beat after beat until they find the right and a good beat for it. A lot of artists will do that. Just whatever works for you. Artists that can just spit the same bars at any beat. <laughs> you get yeah. that though. Like. They just make it sound about right. <coughs> like, you get a lot of that film. Or people just stealing the beat. Like, and that fucking it does my nut on. So on my Amazon Music, on I think it's rap right now or something like that in the UK. Fucking Martin Sofa. Uh, it's an amazing tune, like, I love it. But the start of it is Cadets freestyle, like the Scott freestyle. And really? every single time it comes on, I'm like, fuck Cadet, yes. And then I'm like, oh no, it's no Cadet. Uh, <laughs> Bastard. Like, I end up just going to YouTube and putting on some Cadet. But, do you know what I mean? Like, that's also something that's weird. Like, can you know just pick a beat that's already blown, do you know what I mean, and then remix it, is that not just an easier cop-out, does it work the same, like? You can, if you, you need to pay for the, like, the copyright and all that on it, sometimes I've, I've, so obviously I've got some of my remixes on my YouTube channel, but every time I post them it comes up saying copyright claim, so I can't claim any money back or anything, on any of the any reviews or anything I get on them. Uh, I'll still let people listen to it, but I can't claim anything at all back on it. Fuck but it, like, but if you were to pay, what, say however much it is, like, could you just then release it? And it could blow, and then you'd get mad views and payment through that. Yeah, it would be a fortune, you'll be able to do it. So you don't see, you don't really see like big industry artists doing things like that. Right. It's just I was thinking of Drake again. He fucking that song that he does, and he just spits the M and M bars straight over the top of it, like but a bit slower. Like he's done it a other times. Other different artists. But he will just obviously have the money to be able to pay the artist. To then be like, here, I'm just going to use your verse because I can't be arse writing one. What you be the artist? It'll just be the, probably an or something like the people who own the rights to the music. You'll just fucking need message him mm -hmm. and be like, I'm using that. You'll probably give him a price or something like that. It's mad, I just turn that match in the music industry, man. 
same with every industry though, like, but with the music industry it's even better because the amount of conspiracies and that that are about on it, like, two fucking biggie conspiracies man, fucking Tupac, Biggie, the Illuminati, fucking Jay-Z and that, like, it's amazing, like, you can go down rabbit holes for hours just fucking, no, that's what I thought, Jay-Z goes into album mode and doesn't cut his hair and his beard so fuck it, I can pull it off a bit now, oh, man, <laughs> okay. fucking, it's the same thing, same, same. Fucking Jay Z doesn't let him to take pictures anymore that either, but that's my other thing, that like it's mental. Fucking imagine being that private, like it's probably just because he's a vampire or something, man. He's fucking wanting to show up in the photo. He's up to some madness, man. Fuck, I was mm-hmm. mad. What do you think oh, of fucking the scene in America? So, like, obviously, old block and all that, where all these rappers are coming through, and that is kind of like our schemes, do you know what I mean? Like. No, mm-hmm. like your Hollywood and stuff. Like, Mental. I like it is crazy, but like, do you think that's glamorizing shit like that that they're not even doing? Like, drink coffees, rappers are just lying about it because they know what's actually happening. Like, if you understand me. At O Block, it's definitely happening. No, that's what I mean. I like, oh, hundred percent, it's happening. In Chicago, but the Chirac people, they'll do a dish tune and they'll be killed fucking four hours later. That the death rate there is crazy, man. Like. But that's what I was just wondering, I was like, like over here people are making drill tunes and obviously like, they're no one to that, like... Right, 100%, 95%, 99%, 99% is probably just a lot of shite, mate, like, it's, people just listen to what they hear, and... Aye. like, you know that, you know what's happening in your estate, or you know what's happening in your scheme, so, you rap about it, but even though you're not involved in it, you rap about it, drink that's the same earlier. there. Like, drink half these rappers. There will be certain cunts like it. There's always going to be cunts like it, man. But I just think there's just this male reef, the fucking the gun crime and all that, man. It's, like, it's genuinely happening. There's a lot of cunts just fucking getting killed in the daily and all that. It's, it is, it's getting mad and odd and tough to be fair. I think people get more influenced to it, I know. But I think it does have that effect a wee bit. Like people want to hear, they'll write a tune and they feel they need to like, live up to. They want, I don't know, they want the attention. They'll see the, the attention another artist is getting or something like that. Or like. Obviously, the beef sales and all that, like, that's... Uh, well, obviously, there's no... People see the attention they get out of it. In Scotland, like, there's mm-hmm. no being the MD fucking... I can't think, like, obviously, recently you've had fucking five old this and... What the fuck's that guy's name? I can't remember. She helps. Aye, him, and the other one, fucking... Okay, aye, whoever his name is. But... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's like, apart from Sherlock doing the sesh diss, that's only this is like, a fucking, do you know what I mean? You've heard, well, in England, you've obviously got Dig a D in that fucking rapping about fighting with other people, other rappers. Like, even though some of it may not be true, do you think if up here you started doing that with each other, it could help you off? I, I mean, therefore, beef sells me, like drama sells, any form of drama is just this mean, like, a, attention, mate. that's what people want to see. Obviously, no, you and Chrissy. People are more inclined to, to like, come into like, a negative thing than they offer like, a positive thing, it's mental, mate, but like, if it's, if it, 100%, aye. If, so yeah. if, if you can market it, like the bugs ain't chipped in, <coughs> you can work. Aye, well, that's, <coughs> that's like, do you know what I mean, like, maybe you and fucking McCroy or you and Shogun have. A few disses at each other, obviously these are pals, but just fucking say to each other, right, none of this actually matters, we're just doing this for fucking music, but... but I would have did, disowned you unless I genuinely did it, I don't know why I did so but I could have disowned you I liked it. I was just sort of hinting for publicity and fucking marketing, do you know what I mean? Like, oh. to be like, oh look, wait. If it was somebody I just didn't know at all, like I'd had no, if I just didn't know them from scratch and then we came up with that plan, then fair enough, man, but... That, that was pretty much, but I don't, I don't even know why I did it, because then it's kind of, it's been a bit of a sale of an army, I don't really like it, man, I'd rather fucking just get my like tunes popping, tune really, the way Joyner Lucas and that done it, mate, I want to fucking just go to the full independent route, like Russ. fucking, aye, uh, you're like Russ, mate, like fucking, fucking you're I'm watching book, Hobson yeah. back in the day, aye, mate, I, I put the audio book on when I was driving down to get a dug, it was fucking, it was class, mate. fucking amazing. So Russ's audio book, I'll pop it up on the screen. It doesn't matter what industry you're in or what you want to do with your life, you just need to listen to it. It's, it's Think and Grow Rich. So it's a 12 hour fucking po- like audio book, Think and Grow Rich, and Russ does a summary in an hour and a half, and Russ's voice, instead of a pure monotone voice for the 60s. And it's class, it is one of the best audio books I've listened to, so I'll put the link in the description and also pop it on the screen, but... 
fucking everyone go listen to that. What's your most well, worst your smoke now? What's your favourite strain? I've got a few, but a heavy like with Scotty when it's done right. I have when I was in Spain, I kept on going to the coffee shop and they had all these different flavours. I let them hear my tunes and fucking you know, they started to oh we love the artists and all that, we love when artists come into the shop and all that for abroad and yeah, started to give me all sorts of bud. They're like, ah, this is the stuff that we grow here ourselves and it was biscotti but it was grown for banging man. So I was buying all these different flavours and out of them all, all these mad expensive ones I've got. This biscotti was just the one. I was like, oh, give me this man. So the full time I was like, for, for days mate, I was just smoking this just non stop man. I was like, I need me of this man. So, so What about the UK? What's the best you've had in the UK? Yeah. My favourite's probably a cheese. A good cheese? Style, good boy cheese. Like, and it's very rare these days. I don't know if it's just me. Like, nobody seems to ever have it. I don't know if it's because it's so stinky to grow, but nobody seems to have it. Fucking. When does get cheese hits up? <laughs> Everybody's too busy with dog, bud. Hi, <laughs> everyone loves a dog. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. I don't love the dog. I feel like what is the UK flavour I'm trying to think, but. I used to love haze, but I used to love the good amnesia, like the zippers over haze, so strawberry haze. Selling bags of haze for junkies, huh? <laughs> was it selling dods of haze when junkies were bottled haze? Uh, it's true story, isn't it? Dods of haze, that's also a score, but a dod. Fucking, so I used to call it, like, a dod. Dods of haze. It's a bar. <coughs> I'll drink a bit of <laughs> I was gonna get that one. That one's it's not it's not fully done yet. That one I've got to return to that one. Get that one recorded properly before I go and release it, man. Uh, I, was, I don't think it's gonna be. It's just gonna be one of them. It's just bars all the way through. Like the, all, the ones I've done before, that one's with the choruses and that. I think they're gonna be like kind of commercial hits, man. But that one's just gonna be bars just for my fans, just for the day ones, man. Just to show them my bars stuff. Still got it. Bars, I mean. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so biscotti's probably your favourite weed then. Jink will get cannabis cafes in that here, son. Ah, the way the world's gone, but it's getting legalised everywhere, bud. Like. The only reason it's no legal here is because of the corruption in the UK. It's like the cuts at the top of the UK are heavy corrupt as fuck, bud. Like, but they make all the weed for the Europe. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the UK is the biggest fucking exporter for cannabis in the world. And yet, it's illegal here. So we ship it out to every country. But it's not legal here if you've got a medical card. If you're fucking. Do you know what I mean? If you go to your for doctor. For a no, mate, you just go to your doctor, tell them you need a fucking prescription, you smoke it anyway. You can, there is ways to get one, but... I know a few people who smoke them, man, but you can only load up to five grams. Aye, do you know what I mean? It's still, it's, but then, that's still making it legal here. Aye, it's, like, it's a step in the right direction. Aye, but I'm like, why can't they just bypass all that shit and just give it out as recreational? Like, the same way as know. every other country's done it. Do you know what I mean? Still have that taxation on it where fucking, was it America, Colorado made a billion pound in fucking a week or something? Mm -hmm. Mental and tax when they legalised weed, aye, it was something ridiculous. But fucking, do you know what I mean? Like, if we've got all the grows obviously set up because we're the biggest exporters, so why the fuck do we not just get it taxed the same way like Spain does where you're allowed two plants per adult per household and you're allowed to fucking go into a cafe and say each cafe for a fucking 30 mile radius has the same weed and it has the same prices so everyone knows what they're getting and you're not getting bumped anywhere like why is that not a thing here do you know what i mean like all the cannabis cafes in spain many more people are taking to it as well many more people are starting to smoke it so there's many more people signing these petitions as well so before you know it it will be legalized the more countries around the world that are legalizing it as well it just puts more pressure on the uk there so we'll get there just fucking tell them you just need to enjoy the holidays. Uh, <laughs> Spain's a great place, eh? Aye. <laughs> Working and spending there. You can do right, man. But it is, it's mental. Like, we genuinely have the biggest fucking grows in Europe, in the UK, and apparently we're not allowed to smoke it. <laughs> but the MPs and that are allowed to make money off it. We're, we're just not allowed to. Aye, aye. That's it. Aye. We'll send you to jail, but we're not going to do it because we've got a farming license. <laughs> I'll, I've got enough money to buy all this land. Look, have you seen that movie on Netflix? Uh, about the UK weed scene and it's all the fucking 
it's all the highnesses and royals on their estates and these drug lords have came to them and fucking pay them millions just to use their estates and underground like bunkers on their estates to just have weed farms mm-hmm. and it's I, I'll pop the movie up it's such a good movie I can't remember the name of it I'll need to check it man it sounds good I reckon it's true I reckon there is these fucking estates in Britain where these royals and that own and these rich people own it's just grow farms like mm-hmm. all over the place but if you date in your house or you date in your garage or whatever for the common person you're going to jail or you're getting a fucking fine or that because you're not rich <laughs> do you know what I mean as Andrew Tate says like problems mm-hmm. only problems if you're rich like free Andrew Tate that's it man free up my guy free up the top G aye he'll be it soon man <laughs> he'll be it aye he'll be it soon Aye, it's no good, man. Just when, just because you know it's just pure corruption. It's what's, what's happening. It's like it's it's no good to see. But what I also learnt, which is completely random and off topic, I is like Muslims are the biggest. Not I don't want to say gang, but the biggest population or group in prison systems throughout the UK. Right. Uh, for like like, not I don't want to say gangs because that's not the right word, but. Like for brotherhood and that, so they all look after each other. So there's a huge population of Muslims in the UK, and obviously Andrew Tate converting to Muslim, and then knowing that he's getting flung into jail. I don't know if it's the same abroad, but if there is a huge population like that abroad, do you know what I mean? You're going to be safer than you would be if you were just a normal guy or yeah, somebody like Andrew Tate looking, or somebody that would be looking to get a fucking, yes, it was me that stabbed Andrew Tate or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like if he has become a Muslim, the because of the brotherhood and that with that religion, he will be looked after, which is also a smart thing for him, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. Smart guy. He is a very okay. smart guy, man. Right. Too smart. And an amazing fighter. Like, I genuinely remember watching him in school. Hi. <laughs> right, he fought a boy I know, Richie. Uh, Richie Hawkins, he used to fight out power of Scotland. But they were on the infusion tournament together. Uh, and Andrew fought him and I remember being at school at the time and watching it like and everybody's like oh Andrew Tate's bad mate I've watched Andrew Tate for over 10 years now like go we'll get <laughs> fucked <laughs> like, if you can't make up your own decisions then you're a fucking idiot like you're a sheep like go and make up your mind on everything listen to what he says and then go no that's right that's wrong that's right that's wrong and my opinion search. I like, don't just listen to a fucking sound clip and go, he's a prick, he's a fucking misogynist, he's this. Like, but that's too easy nowadays, but that's where I think we need to get your music on TikTok. Oh, that's not easy, man. That's, yeah, I mean, a 10 second one. clip, aye, a 10 second clip makes you fucking viral these days. That's what is that one. And if we get you viral and we'll be sorted. Fucking, I'll just be a PT for you. <laughs> <laughs> go on a world tour, man. I was going to say, aye, I'll just fucking... fucking I genuinely, I'll just come in the tour bus and just put pads in the bus. <laughs> Any cunt wants to train whilst we're away. Like, Class, man. We'll just travel a bit. And you've always got a fucking pad, man. I will get there. I've got a few hits in the bag right now, man. So, we're cooking up a storm for this year. Definitely, mate. Good, man. Well, we've been going for an hour and a half. Fucking, and it is getting late and I'll let you get home. So, sorted, mate, sorted. So we'll just start to wrap up there, fucking. I don't think there was any questions from fucking Instagram or that that I've not asked you, like, that I'm really fussed about. Because, as you might have picked up, is one of my fighters, so he will definitely be back on. Fucking, we'll have him on in the future once he releases his new songs and once the, he's got his album fucking planned out, we'll have him back on to promote that. But, I don't know if there's an album in there, bro. I'm just doing singles until I blow, man. But the tunes, are, the tunes are ready. The tunes are on fire, man. So you'll see the tunes soon. Definitely, 100%. You know, we've have you escape, got any tunes that you own fully? I'll it? fucking... No, I meant I'll ask you this right now whilst we're still live. You get any tunes that I can use as an intro that I'm not going to get copyrighted for? Like, that you own, I? Basically, all I'm entering is a low beat. Any any beats 
in so in what any of my EPs and what that, just use any of them, man. Aye. But if it if it's a remix, don't use that, man. I so do like your EPs and all that are fine to use, so I could use like that you, learning curve remix. I can no, use that. There's a remix you can uh, use. That. Aye, but I could use like, oh, what's your other one on that? That's fucking. It starts with a what? <laughs> what about me? What do you know about me? How does that go, mate? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? What do you know about that? What do you know about that? You could use that, mate. I can use that. Sound. Sound that. I'll never into that. Aye. Right, well, that's going to be my new intro for all these podcasts, by the way. Sound, bro. Aye, you can put it in and use it. Sorted. I'll fucking fire on for this one. Aye, it will be at the start and that and throughout. I'll also fire up all your social medias and this will be out fucking the morning or Saturday, but by this time next week, well, Melrose should also have a fucking TikTok. No, go follow it once it's up. Yeah, he said it himself. So he'll have a I'll TikTok have next week. So he'll have a TikTok, Instagram, fucking Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all <laughs> Melrose music. Same way Amazon, fucking Spotify, SoundCloud, all the rest of it. It's Melrose music. Go follow it, like it, share it, fucking message him, hit him up, share everything, fucking do everything he's can. And thanks for watching. Sorted. Thank you for coming on, bro. No worries, mate. Cheers for having me. Right. Guys need rehab. Wine house, walking to the top, but it's taking ages. Paper chasing, making wages. But a dodge cops got jailbait faces. I don't wanna fuck, try to raise my babies. I don't really give a fuck what they say, G. Say what you want, but you know that you ain't me. I mean, I'm in my ain't league, cruising down the main streets. Couldn't walk in my shoes, now you couldn't lace these. 